Were either of you familiar with Watchmen before you got these roles? I was not. I was familiar with Watchmen. I have three sons. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So this offers different challenges for both of you then, because you're playing a new character and you're playing a character with you know considerable uh, fan expectations and history behind her. Um, what was it like when Damon first started talking to you about these roles? There was very little uh, about Looking Glass in the first episode other than his intriguing choice for a mask uh, and the description of a horseshoe mustache. Um, and initially I said I would do it when they offered it to me and then they said there's not going to be enough to do. And so the offer was pulled. <laughs> and then uh, they came back a few days later and said, no, we're going to enlarge this character. Uh, and so I started to learn about him as the show went along, almost as an article of faith, uh, just trusting that Damon was going to give more substance to him. And, and that ended up happening in some really wonderful ways. What about you? Did you um, did you go back and read the book, or did Damon just kind of oh. fill you in on Laurie as you went? Well, I mean, he yeah, he 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 gave me some information about her, and of course, I immediately went and got the book. But um, the thing about that first episode where they introduce Laurie is that it is there's so much, there's so much. It gives us so much that it told me so much about her that I didn't feel like I had to you know work really hard to fill in a lot, at least at first. So, cause that, I mean, that first episode was just a gift. And it's definitely, I mean, you you feel like Lori right out of the gate. I mean, for anybody who's read the book, they'll know her voice the minute you start talking, and I think that's really impressive. Um, so, but that's like a different kind of challenge, I feel, when you're, you're not adapting what was on that page, you're kind of taking this character 30 years further down the line. Um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, obviously it gives us some, you know, some freedom, you know, but, uh, but it certainly adds another dimension to it because she's still so much kind of living in the past, you know, that that's a part of her personality that I don't think she likes, but it's a big part of her. The challenge that I think that the storytellers face as well is blending the legacy characters with the new characters. And you're the first new character who gets to interact with a legacy character. So how did you determine when this was gonna happen and then what was this like for you? Again, that's all Dana, that's story. That's totally story. Yeah, um, I think for me, I, I, I felt a little bit of relief because this uh, audience, the Watchmen fans, are so loyal, and everyone that I know that's a comic book fan, in their top five favorite, you know, comic books, Watchmen is always in them. So I felt a little um, freedom, and and I didn't have that I did not have to try to emulate, duplicate, whatever, a, a character that existed that, that's beloved. So it was just my job along with um, our team to create a new character yeah. that they'll fall in love with. So now I'm just sitting waiting with my fingers crossed that they love her as much as I love playing her. As much as we all love her. <laughs> <laughs> love you playing her. <laughs>